welcome everybody to another WordPress tutorial. In this video, we're going to continue the work that we started in the last tutorial about building a reward block for our custom Gutenberg plugin. So let's get started. First of all, let's always remember to run npm start inside the base directory of our plugin so we are sure that every time we save a JavaScript or CSS file, everything gets compiled and spit out in our build system and we see the updates. Otherwise, nothing will work if we don't run this command. Accessing the code editor, we can access our source folder and here we have three different files. If you followed this series before, you noticed that we created in the past just one single JavaScript file and we had everything inside. We had our save, edit section, or the attributes. So this is basically exactly the same. The only thing that the npm package does differently from what we did before is splitting the edit and save sections in two different files and importing them in JavaScript and then simply assigning those files to the specific attributes that we need to create. So we don't have everything packed inside one single file. It's easier to organize, easier to read and interact with, and we don't have to scroll up and down a million times just to check everything that we wrote. So let's get started. First of all, let's update a bunch of things here and very very simple things so let's scroll down inside the register block method inside here you can change the title if you want so I'm gonna leave it allocated giveaway because why not here let's change the description something very very simple like uh, giveaway and reward block something like that nothing too fancy the categories it's okay it's a Categories, I would say, uh, let's put in a common category, not a widget or a layout. It's uh, you can leave it a widget, but whatever, it doesn't really matter at some point. The icon, the smiley, is not that great, but luckily, the WordPress icons they come with an. A, awards icon which perfectly represents what we want to build with this custom block and let's leave the supports at attribute with html set to false because we don't want to allow the user to tweak the source code or the html of anything inside our block we want to manage everything and have a nice front end in order to let the user customize everything with what wordpress offers in the customization sidebar and all the other good stuff so first let's start writing some attributes because we need them in order to define our custom title description and all the other good stuff so first of all let's create the attributes object and inside the attributes object let's always remember to put a comma after the curly brackets here uh, let's create the first default elements inside our block and we can create the title because of course we're gonna have a big fancy title which is gonna be a simple string type the type of source is going to be HTML and the selector that we want to use with this is going to be an H2. You could, if you want, specify it as an H1, but uh, because we want to be semantic as much as possible, an H2 selector, so a heading 2, it's appropriate for something that is not usually the h1 is just a title like the title of the post itself since we have this custom block this custom widget inside the post uh it doesn't really make sense having an h1 as a tag but it doesn't really matter because we're going to start it with css it's just uh, more a matter of seo and semantic and proper formatting of our html code then the next attribute is the uh, description because we want to allow the user to give a little bit of a descriptive hint or a, like an introductory paragraph to our reward block. And also in this case, this is a string. But uh, also in this case, we're going to have an HTML source. But the selector in this case, because we want this to be a paragraph, it's going to be a P. So we, have, we can inherit all the good stuff of the paragraph. Then let's add a couple of extra attributes because we want to allow the user to customize definitely the text color of the title and the description. So let's add another couple of uh, custom attributes. The first one is going to be title color with a type of also this one as a string. We want to save it as a string. And uh, we want to define a default 
value that for now we're gonna simply set on a 333 which is just sort of a like dark black not like totally black but it's just like very very dark gray and same thing we can do with the description so we can have basically a description color which is a string with a default of a 333 value and we can definitely copy paste this no one will complain and just replace title with description awesome now we need to understand what we want to do with our accounts so as i explained in the previous lesson we want to have a bunch of buttons that the user will interact with those buttons and then based on the actions of those buttons we will register that action uh, to be successful or not so we need to define a pre-built list of accounts that we will be able to check and track and we want to also store those variables those temporary variables to see a hey, was this account checked or like was this action completed yes or no so we need a bunch of booleans attribute that we can update from false to through in order to confirm that the action that we want the user to do has been done so we can create an account and inside the accounts object we can define a default series of values so we can specify the twitter which by default it's false then we can say uh, we want the user to tweet and also this is false because it hasn't been done then we want the user to subscribe to our youtube channel so it's false then we can say facebook maybe uh, we can say false as well that's it i would say these four actions are good enough you could potentially extend these and add like for example newsletter if you want the user to subscribe to your newsletter but we will see that later and if this is confusing for now don't worry we're just defining all the attributes that we think we're gonna use and we're gonna see how to use these attributes later but for now let's just go ahead and don't spend too much time in trying to elaborate all of this it's, it's very straightforward it's gonna be very simple later so now that we define all our default accounts and all those boolean attributes that we will update based on the user actions we need to define which items we want to allow the user the writer of the post to customize in that blog post so in our case we have the twitter tweet youtube and facebook so we should at least allow the user to customize the buttons and then customize all the properties that these specific buttons refer to so in our case if we ask the user to follow Follow us on Twitter we should have a button that allows the user to uh, customize the text which would be probably follow me on Twitter and then we need to allow the user to specify the account name or the tag of the account that the user should follow so let's do it so let's define the Twitter object here and Twitter attribute inside here we have a default series of attributes which is the text is empty by default and then the account which is empty as well by default so now we define the twitter object and we want to allow the user to edit these two attributes the text and the account we can do exactly the same for all the rest but each one of these is gonna have something slightly different so let's do it first of all the tweet is gonna have three default attributes the first one is gonna be the text of the button of course what the user wants the call to action to be the second one is gonna be the message that we want to inject in the user's timeline so when they click the button the uh, tweet is pre-built is pre-compiled with a predefined message and then since twitter allows to share a url and uh, push that custom url as an attribute we can have also that customizable by the user perfect then for youtube we have just a couple of things we can specify once again the default attributes here and what we want to customize is the text of the button is usual pretty much everything has text customizable and then the url of the youtube channel that we want to ask the users to subscribe and then the last thing is the facebook portion the facebook portion is going to have pretty much exactly the same the text oh not test did i write test all the time no it's text not test so let's do 
do replace test to text is the text of the button and then the URL of the Facebook page or the Facebook account that we want the user to use. And then we're gonna do that action using uh, uh, simple uh, HTML, simple URL, like in the case of Twitter, Twitter allows to uh, pre-define or pre-compile or pre-fill a Twitter message by just passing a URL. In other cases, like for Facebook, we can trigger the uh, API if we want, well, we'll see. I think that's good for now. We have pretty much all the front end and all the actions that we want the user to uh, be able, the writer of the post to be able to control the customization. In terms of the reward, we have two routes that we can go and let's leave a couple of comments here so we know what we wanna do. The first one is the immediate reward. So the immediate reward, it's something that uh, we could do, for example, after all the actions, have been completed, we can offer a download link, download button, download something that we wanna reward the user. For example, if we have some custom icons, if we have some uh, uh, cool drawings or some uh, uh, cool source code or a package or something, we can ask the user, hey, do all these actions and then boom, download immediately. The other one is the uh, giveaway. So the enter giveaway scenario where we basically uh, store the user's uh, email and actions inside our own database or our WordPress database, which then we can later on uh, extract, we can download and we can sort and do a random selection to pick the winner of the giveaway. So these two outcomes of our interaction with the giveaway, we will define them later because are kind of more complex than what we're doing right now. So I don't want to complicate two things, but if you notice all the things that we did here are basically almost identical to what we have been doing throughout this series. We are just defining a bunch of attributes that now we can use in our edit and save methods. If we save these and we check our terminal, if we don't have any error and everything was compiled properly, we're good to go. Uh, nothing will show up in our administration panel because, or actually in our post editor, because we didn't actually define every, anything. But the thing that you will notice is that the little icon of the giveaway now matches what we specified. So if we click here, of course, nothing changed. But now we have everything we need in order to create a great front-end experience for the post editor or the administrator or the writer of the uh, reward post in order to customize everything for that specific reward. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.